Yeah, favorite bet. Let's stick with the biggest game of the day. It's going to be Oregon, Ohio State. We're going to take under 64. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey for Oregon playing at a 9 a.m. Pacific Coast time. They do not have the explosiveness to hanging with this Ohio State team whatsoever. There are weapons in the backfield with Williams and Henderson that can catch balls out on the flats and make 70-yard explosive runs for touchdowns. Ohio State has the ability to push the ball on the ground against this Oregon defense, who is not a good rush defense whatsoever. They specialize in passing downs and getting pressure from the edge, but that's not going to work if you're constantly in standard downs, which if Ohio State wants to dictate pace and sit on the ball with a 21-point with a lead, they can do that. So I do like Ohio State to win this game. I expect them to cover. There will be a backdoor opportunity, but it should be low scoring because once Ryan Day has a 21-28 to 28 point lead, this is not an Oregon defense that is built to stop the rush. And, you know, the Ohio State can essentially sit on the ball. All right, for my favorite bet of the weekend, I'm going with the Tulsa Golden Hurricane right in your backyard, plus seven first half against Oklahoma State. I expect them to come out with their hair on fire. They lost to this Oklahoma State team last year, 16-7. to seven. They actually were leading 7-3 to three in the fourth quarter of that game. They told us, you know, so they're out for some revenge here against Big Brother. They, in, in their state, they're coming off a loss against an FCS team last week. Now, they had a bunch of guys suspended who were all going to be back this week. I expect them to come out with their hair on fire. Meanwhile, Oklahoma State, just a disastrous game last week against Missouri State. Now, Spencer Sanders didn't play. I expect him to play, but he might not. If he doesn't, great. The offensive line, which lost Tevin Jenkins to the NFL, was horrendous, horrendous. They couldn't get anything going on the ground against Missouri State, who almost beat them. So the, I have major questions about this Oklahoma State offense. And on the other side of the ball, look, they lost their star defensive end, Ford, for the year. Trey Sterling, one of the best safeties in the country, won't play in the first half. Uh, another reason for betting the first half here uh, because of a targeting call. So I think Tulsa really comes out here and battles. I think the line is a little too high. The uncertainty of Spencer Sanders, who you know hasn't been practicing on COVID list, only adds to my confidence here. But I think you get a max effort from Tulsa. Uh, I love the spot. I love the situation. I have lots of questions about this Oklahoma State offensive line in particular. I think Tulsa can have a lot of success there. They get all their suspended guys back. I think this line is a little inflated. I'll take the first half thinking that Tulsa really comes out with their hair on fire here after what happened last week. It doesn't hurt that Oklahoma State won't have one of its best defenders in the first half as well. So give me Tulsa plus seven first half. What do you got? Favorite bet? Money line, underdog, parlay. Favorite money line underdog this week. I'll start. I'm going Troy. I took them. Uh, I bet them early in the week, but then the app plus five and a half. I make this line one. I think that, you know, when I look at Liberty, they had a great year last year, but I was high on this Troy team coming into last year. They lost four games by one possession. They were right there in a bunch of games. They bring back, you know, a lot of returning experience on both sides of the ball. They did lose a couple of receivers, but they upgraded a quarterback. They brought in, you know, last year you had, Free and Gunner Watson on and off. They were dealing with COVID last year too, quarterback injuries. But they brought in a Missouri transfer who is much more accurate, just a big upgrade as far as passing ability. And I think that the upside of this offense is great. The offensive line should be much better. They have two all Sun Belt performers. They bring back all five starters. The defense returns a ton of experience, brings in a couple of transfers that should contribute. And when I look at this Liberty team, you know, what they do well on defense, they get after the quarterback and they can cover some. But I think this Troy team, they can protect. They are great at protecting the quarterback, their offensive line, efficient, quick passing attack and negate some of that. And you can run on this Liberty team. I think this Troy team, which wasn't good at running the ball last year, will be able to run the ball against Liberty. And when I look at this Liberty defense, look, they only allowed 20 points per game last year, a drop of eight points from 2019, despite losing seven starters. Dig into their numbers, though. I know they played three power five teams. They held NC State to 15 points. But, I mean, NC State had their backup quarterback. Look at the other teams they played. I mean, Vatek put up 35 on them. Coastal Carolina put up 38 on them. They have such misleading numbers. Here are the FBS teams they played. Think about these FBS offenses last year. 
Western Kentucky. They went out and got uh, adopted Houston Baptist's offense. That's how bad it was. Florida International. UL Monroe never led for a second. Southern Miss had seven coaches last year. And UMass. Those were the FBS schools they played. The So that's five of their 10 regular season games. Oh, and they also played North Alabama and Western Carolina. So there's 70% of their games. And then one of the power five teams they played was Syracuse, who had an embarrass, embarrassing offense. So I don't think this defense is as good as their numbers indicate. I think that they're being inflated in the market. I'm also pretty high on Troy coming in the year. It was a buy on team for me. Uh, I like Troy. I think they win this game outright. Give me the men of Troy and the Trojans. How about you? Money on underdog? Yeah, I, I mean, I like I like Troy too. I took him uh, season win total over, so this is definitely one that we need to get. It is just not a lot of underdogs on this card, and there's a lot of small ones considering, you know, we we didn't get the Moneyline Parlay home last week with Fresno. They came close to cashing a big one. Felt like I may, might need to go a little bit smaller here. I I don't think we have a clear power rating on South Carolina. Uh, We have Zeb Nolan coming in, throwing four touchdowns against Eastern Illinois, and we're rushing to beat a point spread of 43 and a half by getting 46 on the board. Did not allow a single point. Uh, I think the South Carolina defense legitimately put up good numbers in the box score. Uh, East Carolina has a shot here to win at home, plus two, take it on the money line. Holton Aylers is going to, the November Holton Aylers that we love to bet on is going to show up here against the South Carolina team that created zero havoc against Eastern Illinois, no tackles for loss. They didn't have any sacks. They didn't have, they didn't do anything to affect the play of Eastern Illinois. Um, So, you know, that's going to be a problem against an Eastern Carolina team that generally folds against teams that can cause havoc. Um, If you can't bring that, then the pirates have a shot to beat you outright. And I'll take them at home in Greenville as a, as a two point dog. Don't want the points. Let's do it on a money line. 